The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. The Dark Room. Moving around the crowded dance floor, holding Anne close to him, Stephen Lacey discovered that at last he was beginning to relax. The trial, the war of words waged with the district attorney, the final unexpected victory and the excitement afterwards had been almost too much for him. He was grateful that it was over now and hoped that with Anne's help he could somehow set things right again, someday be welcome at parties like this. What is it, Steve? What are you thinking? About your uncle? How he must feel about me. Impressed, I'm sure. Everybody else in that courtroom was. But he was so determined. What of it? A district attorney can't win every case he prosecutes, even if he is my uncle. He was so convinced Sean Fenton was guilty. And you were just as convinced he wasn't. And that's what public defenders are for, and... Oh, please, counselor. Worry about someone else for a while, will you? I'm sorry, Anne. Now, if he weren't your uncle... Oh, Stevie isn't even thinking about the case. Too many other things on his mind. You know why he's giving this party, don't you? He's running for governor. Governor? I had no idea. Yes, he's announcing his candidacy tonight. Oh, there he is now. Uncle Frank! Uncle Frank! Yes? Oh, and well, everything all right? I was it. Good evening, Mr. Keniston. Lacey? Why, everything's wonderful. We just wanted to wish you luck on your speech tonight, Uncle Frank. Uh, Lacey, I'd like to talk to you for a minute. To me? Of course. Excuse us a minute, Anne. Do I? Oh, all right. Please don't be too long. I'll go out on the terrace. Won't be interrupting you. Nice night. Yeah. I'm sorry about today, Mr. Keniston. But I argued that case the way I saw it. And very neatly, too. I think you proved to the jury that Sean Fenton was quite innocent. You mean I didn't prove it to you? Yes, you did. Oh, then that's what you want to tell me, that it's all over. No, Lacey, it's just beginning. I'm far from through with Sean Fenton. What? Uh, Lacey, you're, you're new to this business. I don't think you've learned that there's often more to a case than, uh, well, than just what's being presented. I don't follow you. Fenton has a past record. Served time twice for embezzlement. I know all about that, but it's a past record. You proved he was clean on this last count. But I know the man's a menace to society, and I'm going to put him behind bars. I see. Matter of fact, I got an anonymous call tonight. Somebody who suggested that we look up a man in Seattle. A fellow named Josh Hoag. What about him? Well, Hoag wants to talk for some reason. Tell us some things we ought to know about Sean Fenton. Some things that might prove a lot more important than a forgery charge. Mr. Keniston, are you telling me you'd put any stock in an anonymous telephone call? Well, I'm telling you things I think you ought to know for your own good and my niece's. I happen to believe this tip. I'm sending a man to Seattle the first thing in the morning. I'll bet you do. To make yourself look good. 
And what do you mean by that? You're right, Mr. Keniston. I am new in this business. But not so new that I can't smell cheap publicity for a political campaign. Why, you ungrateful... Must have been a big disappointment. On the night you announced your candidacy, the papers couldn't also say you just won another case. Why, you... You'll be sorry you said that. Because I upset your apple cart? Well, you're not through. You're going to fight the case in the papers. Steve. Scrape up a... Uncle Frank. Go inside, Ann. We're talking. No, you're not. You're quarreling. Steve, I want it's you to... It's all right, Ann. We can settle this if you'll only go in... No, don't stop. Stay, Steve. It won't settle anything. Ann. I want you to go, Steve, you... right now. Please. But... All right, I'll go. Good night, Ann. I'll call you tomorrow. You're trembling as you grab up your coat and leave the house, aren't you, Steve? Shaking and upset as you enter a bar a few blocks away. And instead of your own reflection in the big mirror in front of you, it's Frank Keniston smiling that cold, selfish smile. And then you see something that adds to your hatred of Keniston. A man in a worn striped suit. A friendly-looking man whose innocence you proved in a courtroom today. He hurries forward instantly to clasp your hand. Mr. Lacey, Counselor, I was hoping you'd stop by. Buy your drink, huh? Buy your drink. No, thanks, Sean. I've had a drink. Oh, what's doing? What's doing? You should ask that, eh, Counselor? I'm celebrating. See, the table there? I've got friends. Sure, sure you have. Come on, meet them. No, another time. No, no, not another time, Counselor. Now, when the mood is right, huh? When you've just won. I'm... I'm not at all sure I have one. Huh? We satisfied a jury today, Sean. We didn't satisfy Frank Keniston. He's going to keep digging, find something else. But there isn't anything else. I've done nothing besides with you on my the side. facts were on your side, Sean. If they hadn't been, I wouldn't have gone along. That's right. He's just got it in for me, Counselor, like always. Sean, how's Josh Hogue? Who? You've... Some friends in Seattle, haven't you? Seattle? No. What are you getting at, Counselor? I've never been in I Seattle. So I knew it. He's trying to dig up something on you to help his campaign. Forget it, Counselor. I got back there and really now, wait a minute, Counselor. You can't go anywhere like this. Now, whatever it is, stop it. Put it out of your mind. That's not so easy. Keniston claims he got a phone tip from someone in Seattle tonight. He's threatening to use it against you. But the case is over. He can't. Oh, look, Counselor, there's no need to worry. Let's forget it. Come on now, stay with me. Meet my friends, huh? I don't Let know. me buy you that drink, huh? My privilege. And we'll talk about other things. A uh, bartender, a uh, Dave. Yeah. Fix the drinks, huh? Drinks for everyone. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Counselor, drink up. Yeah, drink up. Any friend of Sean's is a friend of mine. I'm buying, Counselor. Around again, bartender, around again. phone. Where? I'm home. How did I get home? Yes, Steve. You sink back, surprised to find yourself lying half-dressed in your own bed. For a few moments, you stare up at the ceiling, unable to remember anything. Then as you doze off, you have a vague impression of walking into a darkened room, of sharp words, a struggle. Who? Who was it? But before you can remember anything more... Oh, the phone again. You get to your feet, walk painfully across the room to the phone, catching a glimpse of yourself in the mirror. There's a cut over one eye and a red welt across the back of one hand. Yes. And? I, I've got to see you right away. Steve, they found Uncle Frank. Found him? In his study this morning. He was murdered sometime around three o'clock. With the 
prologue of The Dark Room, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. But first, friends, a question. What gasoline is known as the go-farther gasoline? <laughs> well, if you've lived out west any length of time, you know that Signal is known from Canada to Mexico as the go-farther gasoline. Now, naturally, we're mighty proud of Signal's famous mileage. But even more so, we're proud of the extra efficiency signal gasoline gets from your motor, which makes such mileage possible. For when your motor runs more efficiently, you also enjoy quicker starting, faster pickup, and smoother knock-free power, the things which make driving more fun. That's why folks who want superior performance, as well as those who insist on mileage, are both switching to signal. They've discovered that to get the tops in gasoline quality, there are just two things to remember. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. It's coming back to you, isn't it, Steve? As you stand at the telephone there, listening to Anne. You remember the quarrel with District Attorney Frank Keniston. The party with Sean and his friends. Then awakening in your own room. And suddenly the terrible nightmare returns. Again you recall walking into that darkened room. And now it seems to be Frank Keniston's study and the man with whom you struggle. Steve! Steve, what's wrong, Steve? You hang up on Anne, abruptly. Afraid to talk to her, to see her until you find out for sure. You do your best taking care of your cut face, the bruised hand. Then dress and go downstairs to talk with Mrs. Everett, the apartment house manager. There are a few things you must know, Steve. Answers you might have to have for the police. Why, yes, I heard you come in, Mr. Lacey. A little after midnight. Midnight? You're sure of the time? Oh, quite sure. You see... I'd been to a bar. Oh, I knew that, Mr. Lacey. You were not exactly quiet coming oh, in. I, I'm sorry. There was a little celebration after the oh, trial. Oh, you don't have to apologize, Mr. Lacey. Yeah. Nice to know you're human. You're so, so quiet and reserved. Well, you're certain it was me that you heard, Mrs. Everett? Oh, yes. You walked me up. My apartment being right under the stairs here. Yes, I'm sorry. And then when you came down, I opened I... the door to see if you were all right. I came back down? Yes, and went out again. No. I didn't hear you come in the second time. <laughs> you must have been feeling a little better. Mrs. Everett, did you actually see me going out? Oh, absolutely. You were wearing that checked overcoat of yours. Just going through the front door as I glanced out. My coat? Where is... I must have left it someplace. <laughs> Mr. Lacey, your coat's just not here. Like I said, I'm pretty sure you were wearing it when you left. And I didn't come back. No, I was on duty right up till closing time. Look, Dave, mm -hmm. you remember I was with some people, Mr. Fenton and some friends of his. Yeah, I remember. They had quite a party. I wanted you to go with them, but you left. Said there was something you had to attend to. Did, did I mention what it was, Dave, or where I had to go? What's on your mind, Mr. Lacey? Oh, nothing. Really, I... Had a few too many, just wondered if I got out of line or anything. Why don't you forget it, Mr. Lacey? Forget it? You know, I've been in this business a long time. Sometimes when I'm standing back here polishing glasses and filling them, I see and hear quite a few things I shouldn't. Oh? I always make it a habit to forget them. Okay, Dave. Well, sure is a nice day today, Mr. Lacey. Dave... Yes, Mr. Lacey? Did you know either one of those guys we were drinking with? Uh, remember the big guy? Vaguely. Runs a pool hall over on 17th Street. Name's Al something or other. He's always around. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Mr. Lacey? Yeah. Leave me out of it. You remembered meeting him. Okay. I remembered meeting him. By the way, what do you want to see him about? As you said... Nice day today, isn't it? You 
want to rack up, buddy? Uh, no, thanks. Al around? You got business with him? Yeah, we're old friends. You see him around? Uh, that's him. Back there, isn't it? Last table? Yeah. Al, somebody wants to see you. Ah, uh, send him back. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> that takes you, Joey. Yeah. Hey, what can I do? For... Oh. Well, <laughs> how you feeling this morning? I'm all right, Al. Talk to you a minute. Well, ain't we talking? Oh. Hey, uh, Joey, get lost, huh? Business. Okay. Okay. Al, I don't know you very well, but I'm a good friend of Sean Fenton's, and I couldn't reach him. Oh, you want Sean? Hey, he'll be back. Probably buying some stuff. He's going to take a vacation. Hey, a friend of mine's getting his ticket for oh, I don't have to talk to him particularly. Maybe you can help. Well, sure. I'm a little mixed up about last night, Al. If anyone was to ask just when I left you guys... You want us to say you didn't leave us, that it? No, I, I was only trying to find oh, out... we'll say it. That settled your problem? No, Al, you misunderstand. Well, that's I... so? Well, straighten me out, pal. Straighten me out. Maybe you can straighten me out. Did I say anything about where I was going when I left you? <laughs> Listen, pal, I had a few myself, you know. Well, you were sort of belligerent-like. But if you said anything, well, I'll see that none of us mentions it. That what you want? Oh, thanks, Al, but no, that won't settle anything for me. I'm sorry. Look, will you have Sean get in touch with me at my apartment? Here, here's a card. My number's on it. Oh, sure thing. <laughs> Got your number now. Hey, Counselor? Yeah. Yeah, Al. Guess you have. <laughs> Find your overcoat, Mr. Lacey? Uh, no, Mrs. Everett. Uh, sorry to trouble you again, but... Well, now I've misplaced my keys or left them in the apartment. Locked out, Mr. Lacey? Well, this is your day. I'll get you another one. Thanks. Uh, anybody around asking for me? Your young lady called. Oh? Seemed awfully upset. Uh, there you are. She tried your number, then she rang me. She wanted you to call her back as soon as you got in. Yeah, well, thanks, I will. Say, is she related to the attorney... Kinston, you know, the one uh, Yes, who was... that's his niece. Oh, poor thing, and no wonder. I was just reading about it. Horrible, the yeah. things that happened yeah, well, to these girls. Well, thanks for the key, Mrs. Everett. I'll return as soon as I find mine. Oh, and one more thing. I yeah. almost forgot. A package came for you. Package? Yes, it's right here. You know, come to think of it, perhaps this is your overcoat. Someone could have found no, it and I... held it. It's probably a suit I ordered. Uh, Mrs. Everett... Do you mind if I use your phone a moment? Oh, not at all. Go right ahead. If you'll excuse me, I left a... Uh, my eye in the Yes, car. of course. Thank you. Hello? Anne? Steve, where have you been? I've been trying to get you. I know. Anne, I got the package. Your coat? Then you did send it. Darling, I... Let me do the talking. There isn't much time. Somebody might hear I want to meet you in about an hour. Drive your car out to the 27th Avenue entrance of North Park. When I drive by, follow me. We'll find someplace where we can talk. All right, Steve. I'll leave right away. No, I've got something to do first, and I might want to get in touch with you. Stay there until I call again. Yes. Uh, Anne. Yes, Steve? Don't talk to anyone until I've seen you. All right, darling. I understand. Bye. Yes. Has Sean Fenton come in yet? Uh, Fenton? Yeah, he's back. Want him? No, I'll be right over. Wait a minute, Counselor. I don't think I get you right. I'd do anything to help you. I want you, a passport, but... Sean. Personal papers. Anything I might need. But you asking me to do a forgery job? That's what I'm asking. But I. Oh. <laughs> I get it, huh? You're not sure about me. You're putting me to the test, eh? Well, you've got nothing to worry about. No. No more of that for me. Sean. No, I won't go back on my word to you, Counselor. You're talking to an honest man. Sean. This isn't anything like that. This has to be done. I'm in a jam. You? Counselor? I read in the papers. Never mind what you read about... in the papers. 
I need those passports. Oh, you once told me, Counselor, it does no good to run. I'll decide the points of law. Will you do what I ask? All right, Counselor. I'll get a name from the old death notices at the library. Uh, you'll need some photographs. All right, I'll get them. Old prints, eh? Not too clear. Okay. Not a word to anybody, Sean. Would I dare say anything? No, no. When can you have the passports ready? Tonight, 10 o'clock, maybe. All right, I'll call you. Oh, uh, one more thing. What? Where are you going on this trip? South America. There's a boat leaving at midnight. It's a bad idea, Counselor. Bad idea. But I'll do it for you. Over here. Oh. Get in. We're driving. Oh, Steve. The coat. What about it? It was in the study, right close Did to... Did you discover the body? No, one of the servants. They notified me. They hadn't seen the coat. I, I got it out of the room and hid it. And... And... Steve, I've got to know. Did you... I don't remember anything. I did threaten to go back. You found my coat. What other answer is there? Oh, Steve, what are we going to do? We're not going to do anything. I'm going to take you back to your car, and you're going to forget this. Forget me. Forget it ever happened. I can't, Steve. You know that. I can't. Got to. It's bad enough that I'm in it. I can't let you. Oh, Steve. Steve, darling. <laughs> Sean. Oh, yes, Counselor. The passports? You got them ready? Yes, everything you need. Can you bring them over? Counselor, are you sure about this? Is it the only way? Yes, Sean. It's the only way. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, here's another reminder about the free safety service which signal dealers are featuring this month. I'm referring to the checkup without charge of your fan belt and radiator hose. You know, of course, the importance of a sound, properly adjusted fan belt. It keeps your cooling system operating efficiently and helps keep your battery up. Also, I don't have to warn you of the hazards of a leaky or weakened radiator hose. Yet it's a fact most people never give a thought to these two little items until they fail completely and more serious trouble develops. That's why signal service stations are offering this free checkup. As independent businessmen with a personal interest in keeping your goodwill, you'll find that signal dealers make a habit of going out of their way to give you little extra services like this. If you're not already a signal customer... A good way to see for yourself what I mean is to stop by your neighborhood signal service station this week and ask for this free fan belt and radiator hose checkup. And now, back to the Whistler. It's over now, isn't it, Steve? The wondering, the waiting, the agony of doubt that began with that nightmare of a struggle in a darkened room. You're certain now that you did go back and kill the district attorney, Frank Keniston. And though you've advised a hundred clients against it, running away seems to be the only answer. Then as you wait for Sean Fenton to bring your forged passports, another terrible thought strikes you. Fenton is a witness, the only one who can link you with all that's happened. Your hand trembles as you reach into the desk drawer for your automatic and then... You reach up quickly and switch out the light. Come in. I can't, I can't do it. All right, Sean, you can put the passports on the table there. It isn't Sean, Steve. Anne. Anne. You little fool. Steve, since this afternoon I've been thinking... It isn't right. I, I know what I'm let doing, you... Anne. Believe me, I know what I'm doing. Do you? You've got to get out of here. Someone's coming. You're running away, aren't you, Steve? Your suitcase is all packed. Your overcoat on the chair. And you've got to get... Steve, someone... Wait a minute. Who, who is it? It's me, Counselor. Open up. Sean Fenton. Yes. Just stay where you are. 
Forget anything you might hear. All right, Sean. Okay, Counselor. I don't like this coming around. Uh, who's this? Never mind. Have you got the passports? The passports, Counselor? Well, Look, I tell I... you, she's all right. Where are the papers? I, I've got them here. They're pretty good. Well, let me see them under the light. Move my overcoat. Bring up that chair. All right, Counselor. I... <gasps> what? Sean. What's the matter? I said to move my coat. Yeah, over... yeah. I'll move it. What? Wait. My keys. My missing keys. They fell out of the pocket. They were in my coat all the time. But, Steve, if they were in your coat, how did you get back in your room last night? I couldn't have without breaking down the door. And the landlady didn't hear me come back. Maybe I didn't go out again at all. Counsel, it's late. Wait. Wait a minute, Sean. Yes, Counselor? Where did you go after I left you last night? Why, I... I was with I Al. mean, after you left Al. Steve, do you think... You came here, Sean. Followed me home. You knocked me out and took my overcoat. It was you the landlady saw going out the door, not me. But I... Would I steal your coat? Yes, you would. If you wanted to frame me. You knew I'd argued with Keniston. It was a perfect setup for a frame, wasn't it? You purposely left my coat in Keniston's study when you went back there to kill him. Steve! No, no, Counselor. You got me wrong. You won my case for me. I had no reason. You had every reason. That phone call from Seattle about Josh Hoag, it meant something, didn't it? You silenced Keniston before he could start an investigation, and after you had me out of the way, you were probably going after Hoag. What was it up there in Seattle, Sean? Another murder? No. I don't know anything about this, Hoag. You're turning on me, Counselor, just like Keniston. Steve, shall I get... No, no, I'll get it. Yes. Yes, he's here. No, I'll give him the message. Okay, thanks. Yes, I'll tell him. That was your friend, Al, Sean. He wanted me to tell you he managed to get those airplane tickets for your vacation in Seattle. You no, don't move. Keniston was right about you from the beginning. He said you belonged behind bars, and that's where you're going. Except that when your murder trial is over, it won't be for long, Sean. Not for very long. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Each Wednesday night at this same time, brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Elliot Lewis and Francis Robinson. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone and music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery over most of these stations, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint as well as The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.